Hello everyone! So today, here in Mechanics of Deformable Bodies, we are going to discuss the first lesson, which is the Introduction to Mechanics of Deformable Bodies. So for this topic, uh, the learning outcomes that the students should be able to attain uh, will be to discuss the historical development of mechanics of deformable bodies, discuss the concepts of mechanics of deformable bodies, explain the difference between rigid body and deformable body, recall the concept and equations of equilibrium, and solve resultant internal loading. So let's start our discussion. Okay, so before we proceed to our discussion proper, we will first have a pre-assessment. So you are going to answer the following questions. For number one, determine the magnitude of the resultant R of the concurrent force system shown. And for number two, the thrust shown is supported on rollers at A and a hinge at B. Solve for the reactions BH, BV, and RA. Determine also the force acting in member CD and AC. So what you're going to do here is comment in the comment section your name, your section, okay, and the item that you are answering. So, for example, you are going to answer for BH, okay, so you have to include the item number and then write BH equals your answer. And don't uh, forget to include the unit of your answer, okay. So, the first six students will be able to, to give or comment the uh, correct answers, okay, will receive the bonus point. Okay, so maximum of two answers, no, uh, for every student. So I hope that you receive the bonus points or you get the bonus bonus points from, from this, okay, so you can do that. So let us first define mechanics of materials. So mechanics of materials is a branch of mechanics that studies the internal effects of stress and strain in a solid body that is subjected to an external loading. So the materials that we are going to study here are deformable bodies. Okay, so previously in statics of rigid bodies, the bodies that we studied um, are just rigid bodies. No, so we did not consider the internal effects. No, uh, that a body experiences due to external loadings. But here, in mechanics of deformable bodies, we are now going to consider that. We are now going to study the internal effects of stress and strain. So let us define what is a stress and a strain. No? So stress, it is associated with the strength of the material from which the body is made. Okay, so stress and strength are, ano, ha, are um, related with each other. So... Um, they are actually um, proportional no, or directly proportional, okay? And while strain, it is the measure of the deformation of the body, okay? So, a thorough understanding of the fundamentals of this course no, is of vital importance because many of the formulas and rules of design cited in engineering codes are based upon the principles of this subject, okay? So, aside from uh, statics of rigid bodies, no, um, this course, okay, will also be your foundational course, no, um, in your uh, succeeding courses, okay, so this course is very important. Okay, so let us now discuss the historical development of mechanics of deformable bodies. So the origin of mechanics of materials dates back to the beginning of the 17th century, when Galileo performed experiments to study the effects of loads on rods and beams made of various materials. However, at the beginning of the 18th century, experimental methods for testing materials were vastly improved. And at that time, many experimental and theor theoretical studies in this subject were undertaken primarily in France by such notables as Saint Venant, Poisson, Lame and Navier. Now, over the years, after many of the fundamental problems of mechanics of materials had been solved, it became necessary to use advanced mathematical and computer techniques to solve more complex problems. As a result, this subject um, expanded into other areas of mechanics such as the theory of elasticity and the theory of plasticity. Research in these fields is ongoing in order to meet the demands for solving more advanced problems in engineering. 
So let us define uh, some terminologies that we will frequently uh, use and encounter no, in this course. So engineering mechanics, this is a branch of physics that deals with forces and effects of these forces to the body. Uh, a force, it is a push or pull caused by interactions of bodies. Uh, a rigid body, this is a body that does not deform. A deformable body naman, this is a body that deforms when force is applied. No, while equilibrium, uh, opposing force or effects of forces are balanced. No? So, uh, in equilibrium, moments, no, resultant moments and resultant forces no, are balanced. Okay, or zero. Okay. Okay, so now stress, this is the intensity of the applied force in the body. And then strain, this is the measure of the deformation of the body. Now, deformation, this is defined as the change in the shape of the body due to weight and applied load. Now, strength of material, strength is a mechanical property. And this is the ability of the body to withstand force or load without failure. So again, stress. Uh, strength is numerically equal to the maximum stress or the allowable stress of the body. For safety reason, actual stress must be less than the strength by applying factor of safety. Of course, uh, we cannot uh, do that, know that the actual stress will um, exceed no, the maximum stress or the allowable stress of the body because if that happens, no, that body no, will fail. Okay, so for safety reason, okay, we are using factor of safety, okay, so that the actual stress, okay, will be less than the strength or the maximum stress or the allowable stress, okay. Uh, so we will now tackle the distinction between mechanics of rigid bodies, elastic bodies, and plastic bodies. So basically, elastic bodies and plastic bodies, no, they are generally deformable bodies, okay, so we will... Um, identify no, their differences. Okay, for elastic material, on applying load, it undergoes deformation. So, same with plastic material. No, when you apply load, it will undergo deformation. While rigid body, no, on applying load, no, it will not deform. Okay, now, uh, for uh, on removal of load, no, elastic material comes back to its original size and shape. While plastic material, on removal of load, it does not come back to its original shape and size, okay? While rigid material, on removal of load, shape and size remains unchanged because it did not deform in the first place, okay? Now, for uh, the deformation, no? So, elastic material, the deformation is temporary, while for plastic material, the deformation is permanent, and for rigid material, there is no deformation, Okay, so this is the mechanics no, that happens no, for rigid bodies, elastic bodies, and plastic bodies no, upon um, applying and removal of load. Okay, now let's discuss the equilibrium of deformable bodies. Since statics has an important role in both the development and application of mechanics of materials, it is very important to have a good grasp of its fundamentals. For this reason, we will review some of the main principles of statics that we will be using no, throughout the discussion. Okay, so uh, we will uh, recall uh, external loads. No? So external loads, a body is subjected to only two types of external loads, namely surface forces or body forces. So we will define what are surface forces and what are body forces. Okay. Okay, so surface forces are caused by the direct contact of one body with the surface of another. So let's say we have here this body, okay, and if we are going to place another body no, on this body, so the contact between these bodies will cause a surface force. No? So in all cases, these forces are distributed over the area of contact between the bodies. If this area is small in comparison with the total surface area of the body, then the surface force can be idealized as a single concentrated force. So concentrated force uh, is also a point load no? uh, because it is applied to a point on the body. For example, the force on the ground of the ground on the wheels of a bicycle can be considered as a concentrated force. No, if the surface loading is applied along a narrow strip of area, the loading can be idealized as a linear distributed load. So there are 
many types of linear distributed load. So we have a rectangular load, no, we have a triangular load. Okay, so here the loading is measured as having an intensity of force or length along the strip and is represented graphically by a series of arrows along the lines. The resultant force of WS or the linear distributed load is equivalent to the area under the distributed loading curve and this resultant acts through the centroid C or geometric center of this area. No, so you already learned that in your statics of rigid bodies that if you have a linear distributed load such as rectangular load, so you can solve for the equivalent uh, concentrated load no, of that um, distributed load no, by just solving the area no, of that um, distributed load. Now, the location okay, of that um, concentrated lo load or equivalent point load, no, that will act through the centroid C or the geometric center of the um, area. No? So the loading along the length of a beam is a typical example where this ide idealization is often applied. No? So these are ano, ha, surface forces. Now for body forces, a body force is a force that acts throughout the volume of a body. Forces due to gravity, electric fields, and ma magnetic fields are examples of body forces. In the case of gravitation, this force is called the weight of the body and acts through the center um, of gravity of the body. So, weights are examples of ano, ha, body forces. Okay, and it always acts at the center of gravity of the body. Okay. Okay, so we also have support reactions. So, support reactions are actually surface forces also. Okay, so the surface forces that develop at the supports or points of contact between bodies are called reactions. No, so for two-dimensional problems, bodies subjected to coplanar force systems, the, sur the supports most commonly encountered are shown in Table 1-1. Uh, no? So uh, let us rec just recall no, uh, the different types of supports no, and the reactions no, or the reaction forces that they provide. Okay, so for a cable, no, so there will be one reaction force here and this will be this reaction. Okay, so this reaction force, no, this is always a pull, no, so since this is a cable and this is always directed along, no, the direction of the cable. Okay, now for a roller support, no, so the reaction force that it provides is just um, this force, no, and this is always normal to the surface where the roller okay is leaning no now for uh, smooth support no or smooth surfaces no so um the reaction force that it provides is a normal force so the force here is um perpendicular no to the surface now for external pin or in uh, external pin hinge no so it will provide two uh, reaction forces that will be one vertical reaction force and one horizontal reaction force uh, that will be same no with internal pins that will just be one horizontal reaction force and one vertical reaction force now for fixed support no so uh, it will provide three reactions no so one horizontal reaction force one vertical reaction force and one moment reaction Okay, so let's proceed now to the equations of equilibrium. So we are now just going to recall no, the concept of equilibrium that you learn from statics of rigid bodies. Okay, so equilibrium of a body requires both a balance of forces to prevent the body from translating or having accelerated motion along a straight or curved path and a balance of moments to prevent the body from rotating. These conditions can be expressed mathematically by two vector equations. So that will be summation of forces. It should be equal to zero. Okay, and if you sum up at uh, the moment no, at the same point O, that should be also equal to zero. No? So these are the um, equations of equilibrium Okay, that uh, we are going to, to use ha? Okay, or apply. Now, um, summation of forces no, represents the sum of all forces acting on the body. And summation of moment at O is the sum of the moments of all the forces about any point O, either 
on or off the body. If an XYZ coordinate system is established with the origin at point O, meaning that is in three dimensions, no, we have three, um, three uh, axes or axes, no, that will be X, Y, and Z axes, no. So the force and moment vectors can be resolved into components along each coordinate axis, and the above two equations can be written in scalar form as six equations, namely. Summation of fx equal to 0, summation of fy equal to 0, summation of fz equal to 0, and summation of mx equal to 0, summation of my equal to 0, summation of mz equal to 0. So we will apply this no, for three dimensional problems. Okay, so summation of fx, uh, this will be the summation of the forces no, that acts along the x axis. Summation of fy equal to 0, these are the summation of forces that act along the y-axis. And for summation of fz, forces here act along um, the z-axis. Now, for summation of mx, the axis where we are going to rotate the forces will be about the x-axis. No? And also, for, for summation of my, no? so the, the forces here, they will be, um, they will be rotated no? about the y-axis. For summation of FZ, mz, Forces here will be rotated no, about the z-axis. No? So, we are going to apply these uh, equations. Okay. Okay. Often, in engineering practice, the loading on a body can be represented as a system of coplanar forces or the forces here are just in two dimensions. If this is the case and the forces lie in the xy plane, then the conditions for equilibrium of the body can be specified with only three scalar equilibrium equations. That is, summation of fx equal to 0, summation of fy equal to 0, and summation of moments equal to 0. Here, all the moments are summed about point O, and so they will be directed along the z-axis. So, um, if you will recall, no, in two dimensions, no, we are summing up moment at any point. So, that point is actually along or directed along the z-axis. Okay, so successful application of the equations of equilibrium requires complete specification of all the unknown or known and unknown forces that act on the body. And so the best way to account for all these forces is to draw the free body diagram of the body. So we already um, learned that no, from statics of rigid bodies on how to construct a free body diagram of a uh, of a body no so we will apply that now here no in mechanics of deformable bodies so let's talk about now internal resultant loadings or internal forces so i've mentioned earlier that in mechanics of deformable bodies we are going to study the internal effects that a body experiences due to external loadings no so um in order for us to to determine Okay, the, the internal effects such as stress and strain, no, we must be able to, to learn no, how to compute for internal forces because we are going to use these internal forces no, or loadings no, um, in the computation of stress and strain. Okay, so um, in mechanics of materials, statics is primarily used to determine the resultant loadings that act within a body. For example, consider the body shown in figure 1 to A. So, this is the figure, no? And this body, this is held in equilibrium by the four external forces, F1, F2, F3, and F4. In order to obtain the internal loadings acting on a specific region within the body, it is necessary to pass an imaginary section or cut no, through the region where the internal loadings are to be determined. So, if we want to determine no, the internal uh, loadings uh, at this portion no, of, uh, of the uh, body, no, uh, we will have to pass an imaginary section here. No? So, we will cut this body. No? Okay, so the two parts of the body are then separated and a free body diagram of one of the parts is drawn in figure 1 to B. So this is the free body diagram okay, of the um, lower part no, of the body. So we already cut this no, at this section. Okay, now notice that there is actually a distribution of internal force. No? The, uh, so these are the internal force no, 
um, that are exposed or that are acting on the exposed area of the section. So these forces no, uh, represent the effects of the material of the top part. No? So again, these internal forces, no, this represents no, uh, this, ano, uh, this top part of the body no, acting on the adjacent material of the bottom part. Okay. Okay, so although the exact distribution of this internal loading may be unknown, we can use the equations of equilibrium to relate the external forces on the bottom part of the body to the distributions, resultant force, and moment. So that will be FR and M sub RO. No, at any specific point O on the section area. So that is shown in figure uh, 1 to C. No? So this is the figure. Okay, so again, this internal loading or internal forces, they can be represented no, as a resultant force, FR, and a resultant moment, M sub RO. No? Okay, so um, these forces no, and moment, no, resultant force and resultant moment, uh, they can be um, solved no, or computed by using uh, equilibrium. Okay, so it will be shown in later portions of the discussion that point O is most often chosen at the centroid of the section area. And so we will always choose this location for point O unless otherwise stated. Also, if a member is long and slender as in the case of a rod or beam, okay, so the section to be considered is generally taken perpendicular to the longitudinal axis of the member. So this section is referred to as the cross section. So let's say we have here this uh, this ano uh, no this uh, body. Okay, and if we are going to cut no this body um through this section, okay, so if we are going to look at the area at that cut section, no, so we are going to see uh, this area. So this area, okay, this is the cross section. Okay, so Okay. Okay, so let's talk about now the internal resultant loadings in three dimensions. So later in this discussion, we will show how to relate the resultant loadings FR and M sub RO to the distribution of force on the section area and thereby develop equations that can be used for analysis and design. To do this, however, the components FR and M sub RO acting both normal and perpendicular to the section area must be considered no um as shown in figure 1 to d so this is the figure so again um this is the lower part no of the uh, body no where we're in uh, this is the section area okay that we are going to consider no to um determine the um internal loading or internal resultant loading so the internal resultant loading seal here will be uh, this resultant force FR and this moment M sub RO. Okay, so um, this um, resultant force FR, it can be resolved into its components. No? So this, its components will be this normal force N and this shear force V. Okay, now for this um, resultant moment, in, it can be represented by its uh, components bending moment M and torsional moment uh, T. Okay, so four different types of resultant loadings can then be defined as follows. So we will define uh, this uh, normal force, shear force, bending moment, and torsional moment. So normal force, uh, this force acts perpendicular to the area. So the normal force is this. Okay, and again, this force, okay, this is acting perpendicular to the area. So the area is this. No, so that force is perpendicular. So this is the area. No, this is the area. And that force is acting perpendicular to that area. Okay, so that is the normal force. Okay, so it is developed whenever the external loads tend to push or pull on the two segments of the body. Okay, now for shear force. So this is the shear force. Okay, so it lies in the plane of the area and it is developed when the external loads tend to cause the two segments of the body to slide over one another. So the shear force, it is acting no, um, coplanar to the plane, okay? meaning to say uh, that force is acting in the same plane no, as the area. So the, if this is the area, no, so the, the, the shear force, it is acting, no, it is acting 
um, coplanar, okay, to that area, okay. So again, they lie, no, in the same plane, the area and the force, no. So that is shear force. So now for torsional moment or torque T, no, this effect is developed when the external loads tend to twist one segment of the body with respect to the other about an axis perpendicular to the area. So, torsional moment or torque, no, this happens, no, um, about the axis, okay, that is perpendicular to the area. So, in this case, the axis that is perpendicular to this area, to this area, to this section area, is this axis. So, the moment in this axis, okay, is called torsional moment or torque. Okay, now, uh, lastly, for bending moment, so the bending moment is caused by the external loads that tend to bend the body about an axis lying within the plane of the area. So now, bending moments are moments, okay, about the axis, okay, that are coplanar, no, with the uh, area. Okay, so let's say uh, this axis, no, let's say this axis is... A coplanar with this area. So, the moment in this axis is a bending moment. Okay? So, that's the difference between bending moment and torsional moment. Again, torsional moment, that is the moment about the axis that is perpendicular to the area. While bending moment, they are moments about the axis that are coplanar with the area. Okay? So, these are the four uh, loadings or internal resultant loadings, okay, that we can see if we cut Okay, if we cut a section, no, in three dimensions. Okay, again, uh, these are normal force, shear force, torsional moment or torque, and then bending moment. Okay. Okay, note that the graphical representation of a moment or torque is shown in three dimensions as a vector with an associated curve. So, here, no, as you can see here, no, the, this moment, no, this moment, this is graphically represented no, uh, by this vector, no, with this associated curl. So, the associated curl, that is actually the rotation or bending. Okay, so, um, in summing up moments in three dimensions, we are going to use the right-hand rule. Okay, so, for right-hand rule, the thumb gives the arrowhead sense of this vector and the fingers or curl indicate the tendency for rotation or twisting or bending. Okay, so, if we are going to sum up uh, moments in three dimensions, we are going to use uh, the right-hand rule. So, uh, here, now let's say the, the z-axis is this axis. So, this is the um, upward and downward axis. Now, your x-axis, let's say this is the um, forward and backward axis. And your y-axis, let's say this is the um, right and left axis. Okay, so, um, if you are going to use uh, the right-hand rule, no, uh, let's say that your thumb um, points along or directed no, along the, the positive z-axis because it is upward. Okay, so class the, the movement or the rotation of your finger, okay, that will, um, that will be the rotation of the moment. Okay, and in this case, we are going to assume that that rotation, okay, that that rotation is the positive rotation or positive moment. So, meaning to say, um, using right-hand rule, no, if you are going to sum up moments about the z-axis, no, the positive rotation will be counterclockwise. This is a counterclockwise rotation, right? Okay, now for, for the x-axis, so the x-axis, that is the, the forward and backward axis, okay? So, if the axis no, is, or if your thumb is pointing... Uh, along the, the, the forward direction of the x-axis. So, that will be the positive assumption. So, the, rota the rotation of your finger, okay, or the movement of your finger will determine the rotation. So, the rotation will also be counterclockwise, right? So, that will be the positive, positive um, assumption, no, for, for moment, if you sum up moment about the x-axis. Now, if we are going to sum up uh, moments about the y-axis. So, the positive assumption here will be uh, if your thumb is pointing um, at the um, right, ano, no, at the right side. No? So, the rotation of your uh, finger or the movement of your finger will determine no, the positive rotation and that is actually counterclockwise. So, we will use right-hand rule ha, in summing up 
moments or rotations, okay, in three dimensions. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about now the internal resultant loadings in two dimensions. If the body is subjected to a coplanar system of forces as shown in figure 13A, okay, so then only normal force, shear force, and bending moment components will exist at the section as shown in figure B. Okay, so let's say that our body is just in two dimensions. Okay, so this is the body. If we are going to pass through a section, no, at this portion, okay, so um, the section of the left part of the body will be shown here um, in uh, figure 13B. Okay, so um, upon cutting this section, we will see that the um, loadings here will just be a normal force, which is acting perpendicular to to the area no, of this section, okay, and uh, we have shear force B, which is acting um, coplanar no, with this uh, area, okay, and a bending moment, okay, so this bending moment, so this is the moment, okay, about uh, point O, okay, so point O, this is directed along the z-axis, so in two dimensions, we will not be able to uh, see uh, the moments about the y-axis and about the, the x-axis, okay? Again, the only moment that we can see here is the moment, okay, that will act about point O, which is the z-axis, okay? And that moment is a bending moment, okay? So, again, these are the only forces, okay, or loadings that we can see no, in a two dimension, if we cut a section no, uh, of a body that is in two dimension, they are just normal force, shear force, and bending moment. Okay, so if we use the XYZ coordinate axis as shown on the left segment, then N can be obtained by applying summation of Fx equal to zero. So this normal force N or, or this normal force N, we can solve this by summing up all the horizontal forces no, as shown here. No, or all the forces that are directed in the x-axis. So in this case, if this force is inclined, no, so we have to solve for the x and y component of these forces. Okay, and we will sum up all the um, x component of all the forces, okay, and then equate them to zero since uh, we will assume equilibrium here. Okay, so that's how we solve the normal force N. Now for, for the shear force V, no, so we can solve for shear force B by summing up forces, uh, along the forces that are along the y-axis, no, and we will equate them to zero, okay? And also, uh, for bending moment, it can be determined by summing moments about point O. So this is the point O. So again, point O is directed along the z-axis. So that is the axis that is um, that is uh, forward or or backward. Okay, so that will be summation of moments equal to zero in order to eliminate the moments caused by the unknowns N and V. So if you are going to take moment here at point O, okay, so normal force N and shear force B will just be cancelled, okay, since they will pass through point O. Okay, so again, the difference uh, in internal loadings no, for three dimensions and two dimensions is for... Uh, three dimensions, there will be four internal loadings. That will be normal force, shear force, um, bending moment, and torsional moment. But in um, two dimensions, there will be three loadings. So that will be normal force, shear force, and bending moment. Okay. All right. So let's talk about now the procedure that we are going to use and follow no, in determining resultant internal loadings. Okay, so the resultant internal loadings at a point located on the section of a body can be obtained using the method of section. So since we are going to cut a section no, uh, upon the body, so that is called method of sections. So this requires the following steps. The first one is to um, determine the support reactions, but this is actually case to case. No, so first, decide which segment of the body is to be considered. So if the segment has a support or connection to another body, then before the body is sectioned, it will be necessary to determine the reactions acting on the chosen segment. To do this, draw the free body diagram on the, of the entire body and then apply the equations of equilibrium to obtain these reactions. But if the segment that you're going to choose 
doesn't uh, include uh, supports, no? so no need to to solve for the support reaction. So again, this is case to case. Uh, it depends on the segment, okay, that uh, you are going to to choose or consider, okay, in order to solve for the internal loadings. Okay, so that's the first step, no? If if applicable, you have to solve for the support reactions. Now, for the second step, you have to draw the free body diagram of the segment that you chose no, uh, in order to solve for the internal loading. So, keep all external distributed loadings, couple moments, torques, and forces in their exact location. So, um, in the entire free body diagram, okay, if you are going to cut a section, okay, so the segment that you are going to, to, to choose, you have to retain, okay, the, the loadings, okay, such as forces and moments, okay, that are, uh, that are uh, located, no, in that uh, exact position as the entire body, okay, so you have to retain that before passing an Im imaginary section through the body at the point where the resultant internal loadings are to be determined, okay, and then you have to draw a free body diagram of one of the cut segments and indicate the unknown resultants N, V, M, and T at the section, so, these resultants are normally placed at the point representing the geometric center or centroid of the section area. Now, if the member is subjected to a coplanar system of forces, only normal force N, shear force V, and bending moment M act at the centroid. Now, establish the XYZ coordinate axis with origin at the centroid and show the resultant internal loadings acting along the axis. Now, for the next step, that will be the equations of equilibrium. So, we are going to use no, the equations of equilibrium to solve for the unknown forces and moments. Okay, So, moments should be summed at the section about each of the coordinate axes where the resultants acts. Act. Doing this eliminates the unknown forces N and V and allows a direct solution for M and T. Okay, so if the solution of the equilibrium equation yields a negative value for a resultant, the assumed directional sense of the resultant is opposite to that shown on the free body diagram. Okay. Okay, so let's try solving problems here. So determine the resultant internal loadings acting on the cross section at C of the cantilevered beam shown in figure 1 for A. So, um, we are going to determine here no, the um, internal resultant loadings acting on this section at point C. So, we are going to cut a section here. Okay, so let's solve this problem. Okay, so what we're going to solve here are just normal force, shear force, and bending moment since uh, the given is just in two dimensions. Okay, so we are going to cut a section here no, uh, at point C. So this will be divided into two segments. That will be the segment here at the left and the segment here at the right. So we are going to follow the, the procedures that uh, we talked about no, in the previous slides. Okay, so our first step no, is uh, to solve for the support reactions, but it depends no, on the segment that we are going to choose. In this case, if we are going to choose the segment here at the right, no, so um, here, uh, no need no, to solve for the reaction or the reaction here at the support because uh, here in the segment, there is, no, um, there is no support here, right? So no need to solve for the support reactions. Okay, so the free body diagram of segment CB will be shown here. So this will be the segment CB. Okay, so this is the the this is where the uh point where we cut the section no so this is point C. Okay, so uh here the intensity of this uh load no so this is a distributed load so this is a triangular load no so um the intensity here no so uh we should reflect that here. Okay, so this intensity to solve this no so we are going to uh, use proportion of triangles. No? So, we will have this uh, bigger triangle and we will have this smaller triangle. Okay, so we are going to use proportion to solve for, for the intensity located at this section. So, that will just be um, the, 
um, height, okay, of the um, unknown intensity, which is this one, and the base of that triangle, which is 6 meters. And we will equate that to the um, to the height no, of this uh, side of the triangle, which is the intensity 270 newton per meter over no, the uh, base of the uh, entire triangle, which is 6 plus 3, so that will be 9 meter. So solving for W, so that will be the intensity um, of this loading no, at this section. So that will just be 270 times 6 over 9. And that will give you um, 180 newton per meter. So that will be the intensity ha, of the distributed loading. So that will be 180 newton per meter. So this uh, rectangle or triangular loading, we can solve for its equivalent point load no, by solving the area. No, so solving its area, no, it will just be um, the, the concentrated load or concentrated force that will just be equal to uh, the area of the triangle, which is one half base times height. So that will just be one half times 180 times six meters. Okay, so that will be 540. And the unit for this will be Newton since meter will be canceled. So the um, equivalent point load of this uh, triangular load will be 540 Newton. And this uh, 540 Newton concentrated load, this will act at the centroid of this triangle, which is 2 meters no, from this side. That is just a uh, one-third of the total length which is 6 meters, no? So that will be one-third of uh, 6. So that will be 2, no? 2 meters from this side. And from this side, that will this will be two-thirds of 6, which is 4 meters, no? So that will be the location of this um, equivalent um, uh, point load. Now, uh, we are going to reflect here, no? Uh, as the next step, no? We, we are going to reflect here the internal resultant internal loadings that we are solving which are the normal force so we name it as n sub c and then the shear force no we will name it as v sub c and then the bending moment m sub c okay so we are going to solve this now to solve for the normal force n sub c we are going to use um equation of equilibrium so we are going to sum up forces a horizontal or summation of fx and that will be equal to zero and we will assume uh, the forces directed at the right as the positive assumption okay so uh, here um, as we can see here no uh, there are no other um, uh, horizontal forces right other than n sub c so basically uh, n sub c will just be will be negative no since it is directed to uh, the left and since there are no other um, horizontal forces, so this will just be equal to zero. So basically, n sub c is just zero. So there is no normal force here, ha? Normal force equal to zero. Okay, so this can be an answer already. Okay, now to solve for the shear force, okay? So we will use equation of equilibrium. So that will be summation of forces vertical equal to zero. So we will assume upward forces as positive here. Okay, so this is a uh, ano, no, typo. So we will assume, again, we will assume upward forces as positive. Okay, now uh, VC, so uh, we assume it as upward, no? so that will be VC. And then uh, your 540 Newton force here, this is actually downward, so this will be negative. And we will equate it to zero. So solving for VC, this will just be 540 Newton. Since the answer here is positive, meaning to say our assumption for VC is correct. No? So our assumption here is upward. So therefore, VC is actually um, upward. No? So this is the shear force. So this is 540 Newton. Now, for the summation of uh, moment at C is equal to zero, we will be able to solve for the bending moment uh, MC. Okay, so summing up moments at point C, NC and VC will be cancelled. So we will have here um, MC. So our assumption for MC is clockwise. No? So that will be positive here. And then um, for uh, 540 Newton force, its moment about point C will be 540 times its moment arm, which is uh, 2 meters. No? So 
Um, this is also clockwise no, about point C. It's rotation about point C. So this will also be positive. And this will be equal to zero. So solving for M sub C, that will just be negative 1,080 newton meter. So this is moment, ha? So the unit for this will be newton meter. So um, the negative here indicates that our assumption here in the free body diagram is wrong. No? So the, the right... Um, uh, rotation okay of the bending moment MC it should be counterclockwise so the bending moment will be 1080 Newton meter uh, counterclockwise okay so this will now be the answer for this okay so this will now be the answer for uh, this problem the normal force is zero the shear force is 540 Newton and the bending moment is 1080 Newton meter okay so uh, take note, okay, that we can also solve this problem using the segment here at the left. But if we are going to use this segment, no, um, we should first solve for the reaction here at A, no, by using the entire free body diagram. Okay, so um, you can uh, also try solving that. Okay, so um, you can try that, no, uh, and it should give you the same answers. Okay. Now, let's proceed to sample problem number two. Determine the resultant internal loadings acting on the cross-section at B of the pipe shown in figure 18A. Uh, the pipe has a mass of 2 kg per meter and is subjected to both a vertical force of 15 newton and a couple moment of 17 newton meter at its end A. It is fixed to the wall at C. Okay, so... Um, here, no, um, as mentioned in the problem, this uh, pipe no, has a mass of 2 kg per meter. So we are going to determine no, the weight okay, the weight of this pipe. No? So that will serve as um, uh, a loading then no, or an applied uh, load, external load no, for, um, for this uh, pipe no, or this system. Okay, and there's also a 50 newton vertical force here, no, at this point, and we also have here a couple moment, no. So this is acting um about um this axis, okay. So this is 70 newton meter, okay. So um let's solve this problem. So this is in three dimension, okay. So let's try solving this. Okay, so since this is a three a dimensional problem we are going to solve for the normal force for the shear force the bending moment and the torsional moment okay so this is the given okay so we are going to determine the resultant internal loadings at point b so we are going to cut section here okay so um uh, it will be uh, advisable that we use the segment okay this segment no uh, so that we will not uh, be required no, to, to solve for the reaction at C. So we will consider this segment. Okay, so drawing the free body diagram of a uh, segment uh, BA. Okay, so this will be the free body diagram. So we already cut this no, at this section. Okay, so cutting this section here, so there will be um, internal uh, loadings here. Okay, so we will have here um, this uh, internal uh, force FB that is directed along the z-axis. We will also have um, internal force FB and this is directed along the x-axis. And we have here um, internal force FB and this is directed along the y-axis. By the way, um, our z-axis here is this axis, our x-axis is this axis, and our y-axis is this axis. Okay, so also, we will have here a moment here at, uh, or moment about the z-axis, so that will be mbz, and then we have here also moment um, about the y-axis, so that will be mby, and then we have here moment um, about the um, x-axis, so that will be mbx. So here, uh, we, we, we are going to, I don't know, we, were, we are going to um, analyze no later if uh, what are the 
the normal force here or what what is the shear force or what or what are the the bending moments here or what are the torsional moments here so in this case we are uh, going to solve for um mbz mby mbx fby fbz uh fbx now we are going to solve them and analyze later on okay if what are the um normal force shear force bending moment and torsional moment okay so uh, to solve these quantities, no, we are going to use the equations of equilibrium in three dimensions. So that will be summation of force, uh, summation of fx equal to zero, summation of fy equal to zero, summation of fz is equal to zero. No, so to solve for the forces, no. So um, in order for us to do that, we will first uh, solve, no, for the weight of each segment of the pipe, no. So it will be calculated by using the given mass so the given mass is two kilogram per meter so recall that weight is actually uh, equal to um weight equal to mass times gravity right mass times gravity but the mass there is uh the unit is kilogram okay and the unit of of uh the the, the um acceleration due to gravity or g okay that is um, meter per second squared, right? So here, um, since the mass here, the given is kilogram or, or kilogram per meter, so we have to multiply first no, the, the, this given mass okay, to the length of the segment that we are going to consider. Let's say for segment BD. Okay, so this is uh, B and this point is B, right? So this is BD. So this BD, its length is actually 0 0.5 meter. So multiplying that, no, two kilogram per meter times 0 0.5 meter, meter will be cancelled. So uh, what will remain here is just kilogram. And to solve for its weight, so that will just be multiplied by 9.81 meter per second squared. Okay, so that will be the acceleration due to gravity. Okay, so um, uh, the answer here will be newton, right? Because kilogram times meter per second squared, that is newton, right? So this will be 9.81 newton. So the unit here is newton. So meaning to say this is a concentrated load, right? So the concentrated load here, it will be located, okay, at the centroid of this segment. So the centroid of this segment will be at uh, the just at the center right will be which will be 0 0.25 that will be the half of 0 0.5 so it will be located at this point this is 0 0.25 from here and 0 0.25 from here and also we will also determine the weight of this uh, segment um, ad so to determine the weight of the segment ad so again that will just be mass times uh, g or gravitational uh, uh, or acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.81 meter per second squared. So that will be uh, 2 kilogram per meter. So to cancel the meter, we will multiply it by its um, length, no, which is 1.25 meter. And the answer for this will be 24.525 newton. So this concentrated load, it will be located at the center. No, or at the centroid of this 100.25 meter segment or uh, rod, okay, or pipe, okay. So it will be located at uh, uh, at the center. So 1.25 divided by two, that will be 0 0.625 meter from here and 0 0.625 meter from here. Okay, now um, to solve again, no, for the uh, forces, we will use summation of f x equal to zero. Okay, so uh, summation of fx equal to zero, we will sum up all the forces that are directed along the x-axis. So in this case, the, the only force that is directed along the x-axis is this, um, uh, this ano, no, fbx. So this is fbx. So this is directed along the x-axis. So other than this, no, there are no other, um, there are no other um, forces act. Uh, directed no along the x axis so basically our fbx will just be equal to zero so don't get confused here ha so this vector this is for this ano ha moment no so this is not a force no so this is for this uh mom uh, couple moment no which is 70 newton meter no so there there are no other forces that are directed along the x axis therefore fbx equal to zero 
Now to solve for FBY, so we will sum up forces um, uh, directed along the y-axis, so that will be equated to zero. So here, the forces that are directed along the y-axis will be, um, of course, uh, FBY. So our F, our y-axis is here, ha. Huh? So FBY, okay, it will be equal to zero since there are no other forces. Okay, there are no other forces that are directed along the y-axis, no? So, uh, FBY will also be equal to zero. Now, to solve for FBZ, okay, so uh, we will use summation of FC is equal to zero. So, we will sum up, sum up all the forces that are directed along the z-axis. So, the z-axis is here. Okay, so this is the, 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 the z-axis. So the forces that are directed along the z-axis will be FBZ. So we will assume that upward forces will be positive. So FBZ will be positive uh, or, yeah, positive since it is upward. And then 9.81 Newton, this is ano, ha, directed along the z-axis, but this is downward. So this will be negative. And then also we have here... 24.525, so this is also downward, so this is also negative. And this 50 Newton force, this is also downward, so this will also be uh, negative. So uh, solving for FBZ, so that will just be 9.81 plus 24.525 plus 50, since we will transpose that, right, to solve for FBZ. So FBZ will be 84.3 Newton. Okay, so let's analyze this, no, uh, if what uh, is the normal force here? What is the shear force here? Okay, so analyzing this, the normal force, okay, again, the normal force, that is the force that is perpendicular to the cross-section area. So in this case, uh, the cross-section area is here, right? So the force that is perpendicular to that section area is FBY. So therefore, our normal force is FBY, and that is actually equal to zero. So, this is already the normal force. Now, for the shear force, okay, so the shear force, they are the forces, okay, that are, um, that are coplanar, you know, with the section area. So, again, the section area is located somewhere here. Okay, so the, 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 the forces, okay, that are coplanar, okay, with, with uh, the, the section area are FB, uh, FBX, and FBZ, right? Okay, so... Um, since we have here two, um, two shear forces no, to solve for the resultant shear force, so that will just be um, square root of FBX squared. So that will be FBX plus FBZ squared. No? So our FBX is 0 and our FBZ is 84.3. So the answer for this will be 84.3 Newton. So the shear force that we are looking for is 84.3 Newton. Okay. Now, let's proceed to the uh, computation of moment. So, the, the direction of each moment is determined using the right-hand rule with positive moments directed along the positive coordinate axis. So, again, we are going to use right-hand rule. Okay, so, um, for, uh, let's say, for summation of mx equal to 0, so we will sum up all the uh, forces or all the moments, okay, that are... Uh, all the moments about the x-axis. So our x-axis is here. Okay. So uh, we we are going to uh, we are going to use the right-hand rule. So meaning to say, um, the um, the the thumb no will indicate no the thumb will indicate the the positive uh, sense no. So uh, if the if your if your thumb is um, directed no uh, forward because x and x axis is the forward and backward ba, backward right so the forward uh, direction okay so that will be the positive so the the movement of the fingers of your fingers okay so that will be the the direction of the rotation so in this case the rotation is counterclockwise right so the, the, the rotation, the counterclockwise rotations here will be considered anaha positive for moments. Okay, so summing up uh, mx equal to 0, so as we can see here, the, the moments that are, um, uh, that are about uh, the x-axis, so these are the, this moment, 70 newton meter, uh, we also have uh, fb or MB, mbx, right? So, uh, we also have the moment for 15 newton. We can take 
uh, its moment about the x-axis also for 24.525 newton and 9.81 newton so again uh, solving for the moments about the x-axis that will just be uh, mbx so we assume mbx as counterclockwise okay so that will be positive here and then for the 70 newton meter uh, moment here so this is actually um counterclockwise so this is a moment ha so there there will be no moment arm here so uh this is already a moment so this will be 70 newton meter so this will be positive since the rotation is counterclockwise now for this 50 newton force this will cause a uh, a moment no about the x-axis so its moment about the uh, x-axis no it will be um, it will be 50 newton times its moment arm. So its moment arm, it will be the perpendicular distance. So the perpendicular distance will be um, 0 0.5, right? 0 0.25 plus 0 0.25. That is 0 0.5. Okay, so the rotation here is actually clockwise, right? About the x-axis. So this will be negative. And then for 24.525 newton force, uh, this will cause a a clockwise moment as well no, about the x-axis and its moment arm will also be 0 0.5 okay and this will be negative since it is clockwise now for the 9.81 newton force okay so its rotation about the x-axis will be um 9.81 times its moment arm which is 0 0.25 and this is also negative since uh, it is clockwise about the x-axis. So, it will be equated to zero. We can now solve for MBX. So, MBX equal to negative 30.3 newton meter. So, this will now be the moment, okay, uh, moment at B, no, along the x-axis. Now, for the moment, no, uh, uh, about, uh, about the y-axis, uh, we can solve that through this equation. So, this will be summation of my is equal to 0. So, we will sum up all the moments, okay, um, about the uh, y-axis. Okay, so in this case, okay, um, the y-axis is here. No, the y-axis is here. So, um, this 9.81 newton, newton uh, force, no, so this, this will... Uh, pass through the y-axis so this will just be cancelled okay and um 24.525 newton it will also have a moment about uh the y-axis so its moment arm will be 0 0.625 meters so uh the rotation the positive rotation here class the positive rotation here will be uh this way so the y-axis is uh, uh either uh, rightwards or leftwards no so the the positive uh, assumption here is if the thumb is pointing at the right no okay so if it points at the right the the movement of our fingers okay that will be the positive rotation okay so which is counterclockwise so in this case uh zero yung uh, the 24.25 newton force its rotation is actually uh, uh uh, what will be the, the rotation of that? That is actually counterclockwise, right? It will rotate this way, right? It will have a rotation about the y-axis this way. So, this that is counterclockwise. So, that is positive here. Okay, now for the 50 Newton force, so it will be the same. Now, its rotation about the y-axis will also be positive, right? So, that will, uh, or counterclockwise. So, that will be positive here. So, the moment arm of 24.525 is 0 0.625 meter and the moment arm of this 50 newton force will be 1.25 meter so um okay so this will be the ano ha, this will be the the moments here okay so solving for mby okay so solving for mby that will just be negative 77.8 newton meter Okay, so this will now be the ano, ha, the MBY or the moment about the uh, y-axis. Now uh, we are going to solve for uh, the moments no about the z-axis. So we will use this equation: summation of mz is equal to zero. Okay, so in this case, no, as we can see here, um, our z-axis is this. No, so our rule in in a uh, moments for three dimensions all the forces that are parallel to that axis will just be zero 
Okay, so meaning to say 9.81 newton, 24.525 newton, 50 newton, this 50 newton force, no, uh, since they are parallel to the z-axis, they will have no moment about the z-axis. Okay, so um, also there are no other uh, moments here, no, or couple moment, given couple moment in the in the figure that are um, in the z-axis, no, or that are rotated uh, about the the z-axis. So therefore, the only uh, moment about the z-axis here will be mbz. So meaning to say mbz will just be equal to zero. Okay, so from here, we are going to analyze this, okay, if uh, in this moment, mbx, mby, mbz, which will be the, the uh, torsional moment and which will be the uh, bending moment. So in this case, the torsional moment, again, from the concept that we learn, okay, so the torsional moment is the moment, okay, um, the moment about, you no, know, the axis that is perpendicular to the section area. So in this case, the the, the axis that is uh, perpendicular you know, to the section area is the y-axis. So meaning to say, our torsional moment will be mby. Okay, again, our torsional moment is the mby. So mby, uh, again, uh, torsional moment will just be equal to uh, mby, which is equal to 77.8 newton meter, which is this one. Okay, so uh, that will be um, the, the answer for torsion. By the way, here, uh, this negative signs no, indicates that um, our assumption here is wrong. Okay, so we assume that uh, MBY is, uh, we assume that uh, MBY here is uh, in this, I don't know, this is rotated, MBY is rotated this way. So that is uh, counterclockwise. So, meaning to say our MBY here is actually clockwise. Okay, this is clockwise. Uh, that, that's, the, uh, no, that's the meaning of this negative sign. Also for MBX, so our MBX is this. So, uh, since we assumed it as counterclockwise, so the correct sense or rotation of MBX is actually clockwise since negative yung answer. Okay, so now we already have torsional moment, so we can already box that. And then for the bending moment, again, the bending moment are the moments, okay, about the axis, okay, that are uh, coplanar uh, with the area. So the axis that are coplanar with the area here are the x-axis and the z-axis, okay? So meaning to say, um, the bending moments will be um, mbx, mbx, and mbz, okay? So since we have here two... Uh, bending moments, we will solve for the resultant. So that will just be square root of mbx squared plus uh, mb squared, mby squared. So uh, our mby is just zero and our mbx, that is 30.3. So even if it's negative here, it will just become positive since it will be squared here. So the magnitude of the bending moment will just be 30.3 newton meter. Okay, so this will now be the answers for this Problem. The normal force is zero. The shear force is 84.3 newton. The torsional moment is 77.8 newton meter. And the bending moment will be 30.3 newton meter. So that concludes our discussion. I hope that you learn and attain the learning outcomes for this topic. So see to it that uh, you answer the course material assessment task located in the latter page of the course material uploaded. So I hope that you um, do that no, and um, submit it the following meeting. And also, please subscribe to this channel and like and share the video. So thank you and God bless. Keep safe, class. Bye-bye.